Greetings viewers, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're trading in Mr. Subaru for Mr. GM. Uh, we have here a 99 Silverado 1500 rear wheel drive with right at half a million miles on the clock. I believe it's 485-ish, put a picture up of the odometer, uh, which I did just fix on this truck. It had a very common issue with this generation of GM pickups and SUVs where the pendle, the park reverse neutral drive low, um, odometer, digital output screen in the cluster does not work. Uh, nine times out of 10, it is a broken solder joint. A couple pictures here of that repair. I uh, went ahead and fixed that for the customer while I was in here because it only takes a couple minutes. And you know, all you gotta do is re reflow uh, solder over a broken solder joint. This one had a broken power, if I remember right. And uh, you know, we've got a functional odometer again, so we know the mileage. Uh, this truck I put an engine in back in 2014, I believe, November 14, I put an engine in it. I think at the time it had about 280, 290,000 miles on it. Uh, engine still ran well, just complaint was low oil pressure. It wasn't knocking or anything, but a uh, customer and his son took the oil pan off, found that the pickup was pretty clogged up and decided just go ahead and put an engine in it. So I put an engine in it. I think it was 800 bucks from LKQ for a salvage 5.3 Vortec. I believe that engine had about 60, 70,000 miles on it. Uh, so no issues up until recently. They've been complaining of poor acceleration, poor power, check engine light is on, scan the truck. I uh, can't remember all the codes in it, but the main code, what we're working on today was a knock sensor code. Knock sensors are very uh, prevalent to fail in this generation of LS architecture V8, the 5.3s, the 4.8s, the 6.0s, the 5.7s. Uh, they have two knock sensors underneath the intake manifold in the valley plate. Uh, they are down in a well. Uh, it's common for water to get in there and rust out and rot those knock sensors. Once they corrode, they no longer output to the PCM and it can no longer uh, correct for knock. Uh, so what is a knock sensor? Knock sensor is basically a microphone for your engine. Uh, the knock sensor transmits a signal, electrical signal to the PCM uh, by taking um, not so much noise as it does vibration or picks up the knock and turns it into an AC voltage, outputs that to the PCM. The PCM can interpret that and adjust your timing uh, to fix any issues with knock. Uh, so like I said, they get rusted out, rotted out, they don't work anymore and you get a poor running truck, you get a check engine light for a knock sensor. So the knock sensors are about 50 bucks a piece from GM. Uh, you need two knock sensors. Sometimes, apparently, especially with age, you need the knock sensor harness, which is another about 50 bucks cause the pigtail gets really brittle and they break off or they get corroded and they don't want to go back on there right. So while you're in there, might as well go ahead and put a harness on it. Um, and other than that, intake manifold gasket set because they're not gonna seal back up when we take the intake off and put it back on. Uh, they have a hard ABS plastic silicone impregnated uh, O-ring seal around each runner. And uh, you know, if it is not a lot of age on it, you can reuse that gasket cause this silicone and it will bounce back and it will seal up. But once they get a certain age, the silicone gets crushed, crushed down and it just loses its spring back and seal. Uh, so got ahead, gone ahead and got an intake manifold gasket set. Uh, really quickly, I'll in, put a clip here. This is from a cell phone. This is last weekend when, they, when I initially looked at the truck, just showing how you test for a bad knock sensor. Uh, never replace a knock sensor off of a code alone. You always want to test it. It's very easy to test. All you really need is a hammer and a multimeter. In the clip, I'm using my Zeus snap-on scan tool. I'm on the oscilloscope. Uh, we're on AC voltage graphing. Uh, your pigtail, I believe I show in this little clip, is right at the back of the intake manifold on the driver's side. It's a two-wire connector. Uh, one wire is for the front sensor. One wire is for the rear sensor. Basically, you hook one lead of your multimeter or oscilloscope to a good known ground, in this case, battery ground. You hook the positive to one of the signal wires for the knock sensor. Again, meter to AC voltage, oscilloscope to AC voltage graphing is a lot easier to see. 
take either a rubber mallet or a hammer of any kind of description and tap on the engine, do so lightly. You can do so on the ground uh, area here at the alternator bracket. That's perfectly fine. Uh, what you should see is a small AC voltage every time you wrap with the hammer or on the oscilloscope as you see, you see basically a little EKG, you see the output jumping around. Uh, as you see in the clip, we've got good knock uh, pickup signal on one sensor and the other sensor is dead. I can't remember if it was one or two, most likely it's number two. It seems always that the rear sensor rots out on these. Uh, so that's the way you check it really quickly. Uh, the procedure is fairly straightforward. You take the intake runner off, take the intake manifold off, fuel line, electrical connectors, pull the intake up, uh, pull the harness up, pull the uh, little covers off of the knock sensors, unscrew the old knock sensors, install the new knock sensors, make sure you torque them to specification. Really crucial that you torque these and torque them properly. The torque at which they are installed into the engine block affects the output of the sensors. So you wanna make sure you use a torque wrench to install them. Um, from there, GM had a TSB on these. A lot of these intake manifolds have a foam rubber piece at the front and back of the intake manifold between the intake and the valley plate. Uh, you remove those. Uh, the issue is water and condensation gets under the intake, gets trapped and can't leave. It goes down in those wells and rots the knock sensors out. So we take those uh, foam rubber inserts out so there's more airflow under there so any trapped water or moisture can evaporate. Uh, from there, it is recommended that you take some RTV silicone and make a little dam uh, three quarters of the circle around that plug, uh, leaving the rear facing quarter open for ventilation. You'll see that when we get into the repair. And uh, basically that's it. Once you do it that way, follow the GM TSB. Normally there's not an issue. I advise against aftermarket knock sensors. The GM genuines are a little more expensive, but you're not going to have an issue with them. I have replaced uh, many eBay knock sensors, no name brand knock sensors, Amazon knock sensors, just because the cheap ones do not last, they fail, they're not to the same specification or build quality as the genuine parts. Uh, from there, uh, we're not using AC Delco genuine intake manifold gasket set for the price. The Fell Pro gasket set I'm using is perfectly fine. Some of you may have noted that I was very negative towards Fell Pro in my Subaru head gasket videos. Uh, do not have an issue with Felpro. I use lots of Felpro rocker cover gaskets, intake manifold gaskets, etc. I just will not use their head gaskets on a Subaru engine. Personal preference for my time, money, and my customer's peace of mind, I only use Subaru Genuine Parts. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the repair. With this repair as any other, always recommended to disconnect the negative battery terminal before beginning. Always want to have a pair of safety glasses on, protect your eyes, you only get two of them. So starting out, we're going to go ahead and remove the engine cover. We've got two eight millimeter headed fasteners. Set that to the side. Now we'll remove the intake pipe to the throttle body. Eight millimeter hose clamp. at the mass air sensor and the throttle body. Pull that off the throttle body. Twist to remove from the mass air sensor. At your air box. And set that aside as well. Next, we're going to get up here and start disconnecting all of our electrical connectors, work with our throttle linkages, and tackle the fuel system and fuel lines. All right, guys, so we need to go ahead and release the high pressure fuel line. We've got the connector right here. Uh, there's this little safety retention clip. We can just pull up on this outer metal lock. 
get a pocket screwdriver under there, it pries up and pulls forward. It is connected to the fuel line. You can just set that loose to the side. Uh, before disconnecting the quick connect fuel lines, your system will most likely be pressurized to 50, 60 PSI fuel pressure. You don't wanna just take these lines loose, have fuel blow up in your face. Uh, if you let the truck sit for over 24 hours, some of the fuel pressure will bleed off, uh, but not all of it. Uh, you can go ahead and disconnect your fuel pump relay, fuel pump fuse, run the engine until it dies. That'll relieve fuel pressure. Or if you come to the passenger side right here, follow the fuel line, you come into the fuel pressure regulator, follow the hard line across. There is a Schrader valve. You can stick a little pocket screwdriver with a rag over it to relieve your fuel pressure from there as well. You will get a spray of gasoline out. So again, have a rag covering it so you don't get covered in gasoline. As you saw, we just got it, uh, hopefully you saw, uh, just pre depressurized it. So now we'll take our fuel line quick connect tools and disconnect the fuel line, both the feed and the return. If I recall correctly on a GM, it should be uh, blue or red, which is, I believe, three eighths. So insert your tool, wiggle it back and forth and uh, pull the fuel line towards the tool and then back and it should slide right off of there. Okay, three eighths on the feed and five sixteenths on the return. If you have a return, if you're on a later model C5 Corvette, it's 5.7 doing the knock sensors, it doesn't have a return. Uh, so some have two fuel lines, some only have one. So there's our feed and return off. I'm gonna just push them up back here, let them set on the vacuum line for the brake booster. So everything connected to the wire and harness coming off of this main bundle. So the alternator wiring here, our throttle position sensor here, or I mean the IAC, then the throttle position below that, and our EVAP solenoid here at the top. Have that harness to the side. Uh, on our other side, we just have to disconnect the fuel injector harnesses because our fuel injectors will come up with the intake manifold and the fuel rails. Over here, we'll go ahead and disconnect the main ignition coil master plug we'll go ahead and remove the two 10 millimeter 10 millimeter bolts for the throttle cable bracket here that loose. Uh, we'll go ahead and remove these eight millimeters here for this throttle body bracket up here. I mean throttle cable. Uh, we'll disconnect our throttle cables over here. They just pop on and off. For the outer, the inner, you open the throttle, hold it by hand, pull the cable forward and slide the little dowel pin out. Now we can set our cables off to the side. Once we disconnect the uh, PCV hose here on top of the intake manifold, or you can pull it out of the rocker cover a little bit easier.
pull that up, twist it over, move our throttle cables down and out of the way. Go ahead and disconnect the knock sensor, harness, map sensor. Pull up on our wiring harness a little bit. Go ahead and disconnect or loosen the 10 millimeter nut here, holding the main wiring harness to the intake manifold. Get that loose. Go ahead and work on these fuel injectors on the driver's side. Basically just pull the gray tab back and there's a little black tab underneath for the fuel injector harness. If this is your first rodeo, it's good to mark these connectors so you know where they go back to. Uh, but if not, the harnesses uh, pretty much go lay back in the right area and uh, everything lines up with what you're supposed to plug where. All right, guys, from here, uh, as you see, we've got the fuel injectors disconnected on the passenger side. We've got this breather hose. Uh, from the throttle body to the rocker cover disconnected. Uh, remove the 10 millimeter bolt here at the EGR pipe going into the intake manifold. Remove the three 10 millimeter nuts holding the throttle body to the intake manifold. Uh, just due to the fact this model is one that still had the coolant lines running to it and to not have to do a coolant, uh, just disconnect it, pull it forward a little bit. When we disconnect, uh, unbolt the intake manifold, we'll just slide it back enough to clear the studs and then we can tilt it up. Uh, we've disconnected the evap hose here you basically just push the clip in and uh, lift it up uh, we'll also fish that under the fuel rail as it's connected all the way back down there and we'll fish that out and around we've got our pcv hose over here pcv valve still installed we've got some mechanics wire holding up our intake uh, wiring loom get it out of the way uh, there's our fuel feed and return line just chilling with the ground wire we've also disconnected the brake booster uh, vacuum hose it's here uh, so now all we really got to do is you see all this mess down here take a shot vac vacuum all this out take your air hose and a blower blow all this crap out of here you don't want to take the intake manifold off with all that in there it'll drop down into the engine uh, so make sure you clean that now so you're not having to worry about getting it out of the intake runners once you uh, go to pull the intake off uh, once all that's done you've got one two three four five uh, eight millimeters here and five eight millimeters here. Once those are off, you can uh, pull your intake manifold out. So All right, now that all the intake manifold bolts are loose, we should be able to go ahead and finagle this thing out of here. So I'm gonna lift up either side, break the bond with the intake manifold gasket. Now we're gonna slide the whole assembly back just enough to free the throttle body studs from the intake or the studs from the throttle body. All right, throttle body's free. Now we can slowly work this forward, being mindful of our EVAP hard line here. 
and uh, the rest of our wires and hoses and the like. And we are free. So now that that's out of the way, again, we cleaned this area out, but we still got plenty of trash in here. So be mindful of that, clean the area up, and we can finally get in here to our knock sensors. Moving to the intake manifold, you can see the silicone on the intake manifold around our gaskets is crushed and it's not gonna spring forward. Uh, here is the foam rubber blocks I was talking about. We need to go ahead and remove these and throw them away because they keep moisture from getting out once they get in rather than preventing, preventing moisture from getting in as GM initially intended them to. Uh, so the intake manifold gaskets are pretty straightforward. They just pop right off of here like so. I go ahead and trash these in preparation to install the new ones. I'll toss them to the side. We'll clean this up a little bit and we'll install the new ones before installing the intake manifold once we've uh, replaced our knock sensors. All right, so let's get to cleaning this out with the trusty M18 cordless vac. Put the intake back on, we'll take some brake parts cleaner and rag and clean up all of these ports just so we got a nice clean and good seal with our new intake manifold gasket. Uh, be sure to look down each runner, make sure no debris fell in there. We don't want to start the engine and have a bunch of crap rattling around and uh, cause us bigger issues. Uh, so quickly take a vote, which knock sensor is rusted out, which one's rotted out, which one's failed. I have not looked under this. Pretty sure it's number two. That's normally the bad one, uh, but let's go ahead and pry this up. Man, these things get hard with age. That one looks nearly new. So I'm guessing number two. Oh yeah, there we go. There's the crusties. Check that out. Rotted, rotted, rotted. Seen that time and time again on these engines so uh, let's go ahead and get to the replacement probably going to go ahead since we've got it and throw the harness in there because we probably got some crusties in that connector and up in the wiring and uh you know we don't have to pull this apart and do it again so might as well replace it while we're in here all right guys so to get the connectors off of the knock sensors a little trick i found over the years is to use a pair of hose grip needle nose pliers. This connector is round. Uh, it doesn't have actually like a little clip on it. So you got to squeeze it kind of 360 and then pull up on it like so. If you're careful, you can get them off without breaking them. Uh, but a lot of times they're brittle and just break anyway. So it's good to have a new harness ready, especially when you've got issues with rust, which is normally why they fail. Uh, it's good to have a new harness just because you get the green crusties and junk all up in there and as you can see that's corroded all the crap uh, so we're just going to go ahead and put the new harness on there like i said you know plan to do anyway so the harness isn't connected to anything it's just chilling 
Uh, you do have this clip here that you got to take off of the side of the intake manifold, but yeah. And then you got a clip here on the uh, coolant bypass crossover. Uh, so other than that, take it loose, throw it in the garbage pile, and then uh, we'll remove our knock sensor. Should be a 22 mil or a 7 8 a snap-on 3 8 7 8 uh, shallow, fits on them perfectly. Um, I think, if I remember right, these are 15 foot-pounds, 20 newton meters of torque. Uh, so that's a 3 8 torque wrench. So uh, most of my 22s are half-inch drive, so that's why I'm using the 7 8 All right, broke them loose. Now just to spin them out. Yes, that's a chrome socket, but no, it's not impacting. Okay, so number one looks really nice, and the only reason we're replacing it is because we're already in here. And numero dos, our crusty boy. Mmm, look at that. Nice and disgusting. Uh, our threads are nice and clean, though. And the bore is good, so we don't have to really worry about any preparation. Uh, just go ahead and open up the new knock sensors install them and torque them with the torque wrench all right guys so new knocky boys ac delco 213-3512 gm part number 12589867 nice and shinies let's go ahead and start them by hand run them until snug Get the torque wrench out for final tightening. And set. And our brand new AC Delco GM Genuine 1260-1822 knock sensor harness. No green crusties in that connector. All right, now to torque them. As I said before, 15 foot-pounds or 20 newton meters. All right, now that our new knock sensors are in and torque specification, go ahead and pop the connectors onto our knock sensors from our new harness. Just like so. And push our rubber plugs in there. Oh, these are tight. These are the new design. They're supposed to fit way snugger and be more watertight than the originals. Just smack them boogers on there. There you go. Do they pop in place? And we're good. We don't have the little bracket here for that. And uh, we'll just leave our plug dangling some gap there at the back for the new in, uh, intake to go back on there not the new uh, so GM's TSB says to build a dam three quarters of the perimeter of this with RTV uh, half an inch deep uh, probably gonna go ahead and do that if I can find a tube of RTV that's not dried out in the shop as you see we've already got the intake runners cleaned up we'll go ahead and clean the intake manifold pop our new intake gaskets on there and uh, throw this thing back together. All right, intake 
manifold is cleaned up, got all the carbon and junk off around here, around the ports and the fuel injectors. So I can go ahead and install the new intake manifold gasket. Simply clips on, clips on the ends and a snap here in the middle. Uh, fairly straightforward. All right, guys, now we can reinstall the intake manifold reverse of removal. All right, now that you got the intake back in place, throttle body back on the studs, uh, the EGR pipe back into the intake manifold. Just make sure that the gasket is in place, that it didn't move or get pinched or anything like that. Make sure you're not on top of any wiring harness or anything like that underneath the intake and the heads. Uh, make sure all your lines came through as they should have. Nothing got snapped off or broken. All that good stuff. Make sure all your vacuum lines and hoses are through. And the wiring, like I said, is out of the way. So now that all of that's in place and good, we can go ahead and run in these eight millimeter bolts for the intake manifold and torque it down. All right, guys, now we're ready to torque the intake manifold. We got to go in two sequences. I'll put the picture up on the screen of the sequence as I do it. Uh, first round, we go 44 inch pounds or five Newton meters. All right, from there, then we'll go the whole sequence again, torquing to 10 Newton meters or 89 inch pounds. All right, and intake manifold is torqued and set. Uh, we can reinstall the nuts for the throttle body, torque them, torque our EGR pipe next. All right, three 10 millimeter nuts for the throttle body, torqued to 10 Newton meters.
as well as the 10 millimeter bolt over here for our EGR pipe where it goes in the intake manifold. All right, now that that's out of the way, we can go ahead and start putting all of our wiring harness back, put all of our connectors back, connect the fuel lines, and uh, finish up this job. And go ahead and take our wire loose, let our wiring harness back down on the engine. And just start plugging everything back up. Evap. Throttle position. High layer control alternator. Make sure that's hooked up for the fuel pressure regulator. Run our PCV back in. and pull our new wiring harness for the knock sensors, clip it back onto the intake where it was, plug it back in, plug our map sensor back up. We can go ahead and reinstall the 10 millimeter nut here for the wiring harness. Snug it back up. And we can go ahead and reconnect our fuel injectors, harnesses. And the ignition coil master plug. Put the lock back in. Reattach the breather hose on the throttle body. throttle cables. And we are basically done. All right, reinstall your air inlet hose. Tighten the clamps at the mass air sensor and throttle body.
I'm gonna go ahead and start the truck up before you install the beauty cover, engine cover. You wanna make sure you don't have any leakage of fuel or anything like that, uh, that the cover would block you from seeing. So with that said, let's go ahead and fire the engine up. You wanna cycle the key on and off a couple times to prime the fuel system, check for any leaks at the fuel lines uh, before firing it up. If you see no leaks, you're good to go. All right, don't see any fuel leaks at the fuel lines, Schrader valve, etc. So we should be good to go ahead and fire it. All right, with that done, everything's good to go. We can go ahead and reinstall the engine cover and we are done. Aside from uh, putting the hood back out of uh, service mode and uh, going for a test drive. and good to go. All right guys, when I talk about service mode, I'm talking about this. There's a 13 millimeter bolt nut here at the hinge on either side and there's two holes. Normally the hinges are bolted into the lower holes and your hood opens about 45 degrees. Uh, service mode is when you take these nuts and bolts loose and tilt the hood all the way open and put the nut and bolt at the rearmost hole. That's called service mode. That opens your hood about 90 degrees, makes it a lot easier to get in the engine bay and work about hitting your head on the hood. So we're gonna go ahead and put that back to normal mode. This is a lot easier to do when you've got help. All right, and our hood's back in normal position. So that'll do it for the video on knock sense for replacement and diagnosis in the GM 4.8, 5.36 6 liter and 5.7 liter V8s. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I will see you in the next video.